Oh, it's a dream come true, you know? Um, uh, I, no, I mean, I, so I grew up uh, about four hours east of here. Um, but playing professional baseball in general is pretty cool, it's, you know? Obviously, it was a goal from a young age, and uh, to have that come to fruition is a lot of fun. You know, my dad is a uh, is like a super baseball fan, so he uh, got my brothers and I involved really, really young, and just kind of played my whole life. So I, uh, I guess that inspiration kind of stemmed from there, basically. This is my tenth season, so I was uh, played high school baseball in uh, upstate New York, like Albany area. Um, went to college at Binghamton, and then uh, originally was drafted by Oakland. Played six years in that farm system, and then um, after being released, got picked up by the Blue Jays, and kind of have. Been with the Blue Jays now for the last three years or so, or four. This is my fourth year, I think, with the Blue Jays. So it's uh, it's been kind of long, but uh, you know, been on all over the country basically playing minor league baseball <laughs> in the highs, but not not get too high. Um, and then obviously, you know, if you lose a couple in a row, you can't let that beat you up because every day is a new day out here. It still looks really good, even though it's uh, now 31 years old, and it's one of the older parks in the league. I think only Pawtucket, which their their stadium's a historic stadium in Rhode Island, is older. But the Bisons have done a great job over the years of making it look like it's still very, very new and very young in its life. And um, it's shrunk over the years. This was built to be a big league park. Um, Bob and Mindy Rich, when they built this ballpark in, in the late 80s in concert with, the, with everybody and locally uh, in government, they wanted this to be a big league city. Uh, unfortunately, Miami and Colorado got the big league franchises instead of Buffalo. <laughs> That was pretty wild. I mean, here's a guy who played for West Virginia, played for the Rams, and his career ended, his life almost ended. He was shot twice in the head. The bullets went right through his head, out above his eyebrow. I mean, somehow it lived. Just to be able to sit down with him and him giving the nitty-gritty details on the night his life should have ended was just unreal. And it's the kind of interview that I don't think you can just get in a, in a locker room, you can get talking on the phone, you've got to like get to where they are, on their level, in their world, getting dinner, in their homes, um, and some open up, some don't, but I think that's like the beauty of the job, is like you, you're always learning something and you're getting to know these guys as, as people. You know, there's going to be football stories still, X's and O's kind of stories, but I think by and large a lot of players like it when they don't have to talk about like what went right in the game, what went wrong, like they get asked this stuff a million times like and trust me I was one of them that would ask it a million times and when you're covering a team and you're a local beat writer you've got to you've got to get these questions answered about what happened in a game what went right what went wrong but I think they like talking about their lives they like the fact that they're not just robots that you plug into a fantasy football lineup they're people and that's what we try to do with our stories